All right, well, let's begin. Uh, so good morning. Uh, my name is Susan Heyman. I am with a company called Enviro Issues, and we are providing the facilitation support uh, and other meeting support um, for uh, not only today's meeting, but we did for yesterday and for this whole series of sagebrush conservation uh, stakeholder online workshops. So really glad that you are here with us today. Um, today's focus is on case studies, uh, examples of successful collaborative approaches. And before I say much more about that, um, except for pointing out, please, at the bottom of your screen, you see a phone number there uh, for Liz Mack. And Liz is, uh, works with me at Enviro Issues, and she is providing um, technical hosting support today. So if you have any technical issues during um, the presentation today, please write down that phone number just in case, 210-269-5524, and you can call or text Liz and she can give you a hand. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Brian. Uh, Brian uh, Nesvik is the director of Wyoming Game and Fish and is providing our opening and welcome. Brian? Hey, thank you very much, Susan. And first, I just want to say I'm glad that uh, that Wafa and Tom and and San and crew were able to, and all the other folks that have um, invested into making this thing work um, in a much different environment than we planned several months ago. I, I, I applaud them for pulling this off, even, even under some challenging um, circumstances. I think we're all learning how to do um, these kind of virtual meetings a little bit better. Maybe it's going to serve us down the road to, um, to be able to help us. I, I'm hoping in ways to be more efficient, but I, I do regret the fact that we're not able to all be in the same room at the same place and, and be able to discuss these issues in person. So I really, um, you know, one of the things that certainly is in my purview and, and something that my constituents and my department expected me is to look long term. And, and so, you know, I look at a lot of these types of conferences through the lens of, of um, are we being purposeful and looking at what um, we're doing today that's going to help us um, with planning and with policy and with the long term being able to provide the resources to those folks that are out on the ground and actually doing the work that is so important we're going to talk about here today and that, that you all talked about yesterday and looking at the topics you have here I think um, I think you've hit the mark I think that you know looking at places where we've enjoyed some success and using those as models is the is what the right model should look like for um, for looking at the future and making sure that we synchronize our efforts both with with um, stuff that's happening on the ground with field work and the and the all the way up to the most senior policy level decisions that we make related to these issues you know and um, I will tell you that from my perspective there's a lot of issues that are biting at our ankles today but when I think about the most pressing long-term um, issues for wildlife conservation. Um, what we're, we're talking about here today, at least in the West, is in the top three for sure. Um, it's certainly very important in my state. I think that um, it's important from both a rangeland health perspective as well as a wildlife perspective. Certainly in, you know, in, in our state and many of other states in the, in the West, um, you know, significant portions of our states are dominated by sagebrush. sagebrush landscapes that are unique and there's a lot of wildlife species and wildlife species that are cornerstones to what we do every day and what um, are, are important to our constituents, you know, that, that rely on sagebrush ecosystems. So I think this is great. Um, th this is a great way to focus efforts on things that are really important today, most important issues today for the West. Um, you know, in our state, we're looking real hard at invasives. I look at you know, the, one of the things that I wish we could go back in time and, and um, change is the way that we deal, dealt with invasives 70 years ago. And um, I think that we would be dealing with a different set of challenges today if we had done that. And so I think your work today on and, and talking about um, invasive species, you know, particularly the three big um, invasive annual grasses is really important. Um, I will tell you that if I look at what, you know, what are the potential policy level outcomes of this kind of work, um, first of all, I think that it provides a basis for um, all decision makers from all the different stakeholders, all the different 
um, governmental entities as well as NGOs and, and industry and, and all involved. It's, a, it's an opportunity for folks to synchronize their efforts, both between field work and, and policy work. I think just you know continued increased awareness is another potential outcome of what um, what these kind of conferences do for us. We recently had a great um, one day meeting that that focused on a lot of these similar issues um, a few months ago in Monterey, California, and and you know when I when I, I look at each time we conduct one of those meetings and we evaluate the latest and greatest and the most updated information. I, I see progression in um, identifying new messages to help people become more aware of what, how important this really is. Because I, I don't think I don't think we've hit the mark there yet. I think it's really. Um, I, I think that within our group, I think we're um, folks get it. I think outside of our group, we got some challenges. Um, I do think that you know the the work that that these kind of another potential positive outcome for these kind of summits is to provide some talking points, messaging, and some focus for funding. And so I'm hopeful that um, is another outcome. And then, you know, it does, um, it provides some more baseline information for groups like WAFWA and Intermountain Joint, Intermountain West Joint Venture and, and others to, um, to focus their efforts on and projects and, and project approvals. So anyway, um, this is certainly a, a priority for WAFWA. It's certainly a priority for my state, Wyoming. We've, um, invested significantly in it already and, and plan to do more. And um, I do think it's this is one of those that for the long term is is really important. Even when we've got short term issues that are, um, like I said, biting in our ankles and competing for funding, I think this is a thing that we need, we've got to maintain some long term focus on despite um, even the most dire of challenges today with funding. So with that, I thank all of you for your investment here. Um, I wish that you could have come to our state during spring. It's it's a beautiful time of the year here for those of you that have been here before, um, but there'll be some more opportunity in the future. And I think, Susan, um, you wanted me to, to, at this point, introduce Bob. Is that correct? Actually, if you could hold that introduction for just a minute, Brian, I'll circle back to you. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Really appreciate your opening remarks. And uh, again, we'll, we will circle back to you here in just a minute. Um, so again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, Susan Heyman here. And I'd like to introduce just a couple other uh, folks that are going to be helping me today uh, with this and also with this overall online workshop. Uh, also with Enviro Issues, I mentioned Liz Mack. And again, Liz is our technical host and co-facilitator, so please uh, reach out to her if you have any technical issues. Um, Candace Plendel uh, is also on the team. She's supporting the workshops and uh, can be reached as well. Uh, Candace will also be helping us put uh, documentation together for uh, today's meeting. Uh, Jackie Dagger and Janelle Hull have really been leading, uh, pulling the presentations together um, from the presenters, making those accessible for folks. Uh, and then uh, really leading the online engagement. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, and we'll all be involved in the breakout groups that occur next week. So very excited um, uh, to help with that. And I also just wanna mention right now, we have uh, 112 participants and that includes our speakers, but um, that's a really good group of folks. And we're, we are certainly very glad uh, to have you here. So just a couple of things, and many of you, if not all of you, were with us yesterday, so apologies if there's a repeat here, but just want to mention this so that everyone is comfortable using this Zoom environment. Uh, first of all, I want to make you aware that we are recording today's meeting, and we will be posting a link of that, uh, of this meeting, to our website, and we'll provide that uh, website link. It will actually be provided to you in the question and answer uh, pane that I will speak to here in just a minute. Um, again, attendees will be muted uh, throughout the meeting unless called upon by me. Um, and we're going to ask that uh, attendees, when we do ask for any questions, if you could please raise your hand. And let me show you where that is if you're not familiar. At the bottom of the screen, and your screen should look like mine right now, there's a raise hand. If you click on that, uh, we'll get an indication. A little electronic hand will pop up. 
and then we'll call on you uh, and we will unmute you so that you're able to ask your question. If you would rather submit a question in writing, uh, you're welcome to do that using this uh, little Q&A uh, panel at the bottom. And when you click that, uh, this kind of a, a box will open up and you can just type in your question and you can send it to us anonymously or it will be identified by however you signed in today. Um, one thing about, uh, you're certainly welcome to submit these anonymously, but if we do have your name, what's handy is that if we get pressed for time and we're not able to get to all the questions, we can definitely circle back with you or have the speaker circle back with you. So whatever you prefer to do, um, but this is another option. Uh, you do control your own sound. So if, if some of the speakers are too quiet or um, we do have a video today we'll be showing and once we run that video, that might actually be a little bit loud. So please just maintain whatever control you need and have your sound set as comfortably as possible. Um, so for today, again, reminder, if you have any technical difficulties, please reach out to Liz. Um, we did have several people contact us yesterday. Uh, it was very helpful, I think, for them to be able to reach Liz and we were able to take care of those issues very quickly. So if you do have any, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you see on the screen here, this is the link we have to our sagebrush conservation workshop.participate.online. That's our online engagement site. We will post that link in the Q&A panel so that you're able to actually get to that on screen. So our agenda, and I won't read it to you here, but um, I do want to just point out a couple of things. You all should have this agenda. Um, one thing that's kind of important to note is that we will take a five minute pause or a five minute break at the top of the hour. Um, we have found that's just very helpful to give people a chance to step away from their computer screens for a minute, um, refill their coffee, get a glass of water, whatever it is they need, and then we'll get back going again. I will give you a little bit of a heads up uh, when we're ready to begin. So if you have your sound still up, you'll be able to hear us uh, before we actually get started. Um, today's, today's session really is focused on thinking about all of the interesting and, and good work that's going on in the sagebrush biome and possibly what we might learn from that and apply to problem solving some of the, the issues that still exist in the sagebrush conservation world. Um, so really invite you to be thinking about that. That's really our purpose today. Um, and on this agenda, the, the presenters here are all you know, they are the people that are leading or passionate about these case studies that they are presenting. So we really appreciate their time. Uh, we appreciate their expertise and look forward to hearing from them. They have some very engaging slides. The presentations will last generally between 15 and possibly to 20 minutes. And then we, we do hope to have five minutes or so for questions at the end of those, but we will hold questions until the end. And I think that is all I need to say about uh, about all of those details. So with that, I would like to turn this over to Tom Remington. Uh, Tom is uh, our, our host with the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. And Tom, would you like to uh, take, take the helm here? Yeah, thank you, Susan. I just wanted to spend a few minutes um, sort of introducing these case studies and, and how we got here and how they fit in. The case studies originated with the Increasing Capacity for Conservation, Sagebrush Conservation Work Group, which Ali Duvall has been heading up for actually a couple of years now. And the take home message from yesterday, uh, I think was we have a lot of work to do. Um, and we need more capacity for conservation in virtually every dimension, whether it's funding, uh, boots on the ground, uh, communication, networking, et cetera. Um, and so we, as, as a committee, we looked at um, so where are examples across the West of how people are increasing capacity at local scales. And as a community of conservationists, we all face similar challenges across the biome, but our approaches differ substantially and we can learn from each other. So the idea here is to present some of these um, novel collaborative approaches um, they say there's no new ideas, but the reality is um, there are repackaging of old ones if there aren't new ones, but good ideas and good programs, implementing good ideas, turning them into good programs 
and good groups are, are surprisingly rare. And we tend to view them as obvious and inevitable if and after they succeed. Um, for instance, of course, the Utah Watershed Restoration Initiative is funding, funding locally submitted restoration proposals. Uh, they always have. Well, somebody had that idea once and actually turned it into a program. And you think, of course, the Sage Grouse Initiative is a key component of the Farm Bill. And of course, it works on public and private lands. Um, but that wasn't inevitable. Somebody had that idea and somebody turned it into reality. So we want, one of the things I want to uh, emphasize is look at these case studies for what they are and what they do, but think about what they represent. Um, it's really, um, they're all examples in di very different ways of local control of local problems um, and collaboration uh, ac across um, a lot of different scales and, and NGOs and, and ranchers and industry and and agencies and, and government is really supporting those efforts in most cases as opposed to making them happen. And I think that's a, a place we need to get to because government is not going to be able to do this alone. Um, so th these specific programs may be plug and play. You may be able to take the Rangeland Fire Protection Association model and, and plug it into your state, but the collaborative approach to that problem and the local control and local ownership and the idea of um, divest the state actually sharing executive authority and responsibility. The firefighting is a state and federal responsibility. It's not a rancher responsibility. But in that case, they shared that executive power and authority with stakeholders. Uh, you'll hear about the Wyoming stage grouse implementation team and, and various facets of that, including the um, lo local groups um, that are restored, the Douglas Core Area Restoration Team. That's another place where uh, regulatory authority was shared by government uh, with stakeholders. Um, that's not the model you see in every Western state. So, so don't just look at the very specific details of the programs, look at what they represent, and that's probably more transplantable to your particular situation. Um, than, the, than the specific details of the program. So anyway, uh, just wanted to sort of make those points. I wanna thank the speakers um, as well today. Really appreciate your time. I think we're, we're all gonna benefit. I'm really excited to hear about uh, some of these things that I've read about, but really don't understand the details of. So back to you, Susan, thanks. All right, thanks very much, Tom. Uh, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and go back to Brian. And Brian, if you would uh, please introduce our first speaker.